Welcome, Wapham crew and new listeners. Secure your tinfoil hats, buckle down tight, and hold on loosely as we soar over the rocky tops of the La Platas on a rocky mountain high, get sucked into the vortex of the Four Corners, and settle down snugly at mile marker 420. It is Sunday, February 5th, Monday, February 6th. For those of you across the pond and beyond, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you. And welcome to We Are Paradox Media's Late Night in the Rockies. I'm your host, Tessa TNT, and we are broadcasting live from the Mile High Clubhouse tonight. I'm so glad you guys could join us this evening on the full moon. A lot of wacky stuff has been happening so far. A lot of crazy energies going on out there. I hope you guys are staying safe. Snuggle up with your favorite blankie, wooby, whatever you want to call it. Grab yourself a drink, some popcorn, whatever you may need to get through this. We're doing um, something very awesome tonight, and I'll talk about that here in just a minute. If you're listening to us live right now, you may be listening to us on KPNL Radio, which you can find at KPNL Radio at kpnl-db.com. You can also find us live right now on eTalk Radio, which you can find on eTalk forward slash, it's actually eTalk.tv forward slash radio. If you want to listen to us in your free time, whether you're working, working it, or working out, make sure you look us up under We Are Paradox Media at Spreaker, Twitter, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Facebook. We're also on YouTube, Twitch, um, CastBox, Tumblr, SoundCloud, TuneIn Radio, Deezer, Podcast Addict, and Podcast Chaser. So tonight um, we're going to be discussing. Um, a spiritual cleansing of land, as well as uh, doing a fundraiser for Reality Orphanage. So we're hoping that Cassano can uh, join us this evening, but otherwise, we have Mr. Troy Bacon with us. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming out, Troy, and thanks for hanging out with us and helping us out with um, with this awesome orphan- orphanage. These kids are so cute. Thank you. 
Yeah, there's yeah, other places, 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 you know, um, if you want to expect 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 to expect
Sorry, I just Sorry, sent the message from Mr. Morris. Sorry, I just sent the message from Mr. Morris. Sorry, I just sent the message from Mr. Morris. Sorry, I just sent the message from Mr. Morris. Sorry, I just sent the um, yeah, 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 so when yeah, you go into a property and you're going to go into the land, 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 land,
either way, 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 either way,
the river spirit itself and her are in a way soul sisters and that's why she goes there but i especially got this i think it came from the river spirit um this interesting message that something that she can do when she travels um she's kind of a land healer too but she's also learning about this and learning how to do more of this and get into this um the message though was that for her to start meditating with the rocks from that river and when she does so visualize just imagine being there again and what that feels like bring in that river energy again even if she's in her home in addition she can bring those rocks or at least one of them with her when she travels and um, I think this is neat if you have a particular connection, like a spiritual connection with a land or something like this, or you can just also choose a crystal or a stone to designate as your healing rock. But the other tip was that she can take a rock, one of these rocks with her when she travels to places with water or just other lands um meditate with them connect with the river spirit um remotely and bring in that clarity um it helps her get clear to do that and so once she does that with the rock then she can set it on a ground or on a plant or in a particular um, spot in a land that might be high energy, high energy or just in a particular spot or even water and then let it sit there and then um, move on and so then that's like the more she does that it would create like a web uh, a big connection a web of connections with that river spirit and gradually increasing the connections of the earth grid So, based on that, I'm actually going to start practicing something like that. Um, I haven't done much of it yet. That was just recently, but there are some places around Seattle I feel called to go for land healing. I think I need to designate certain days for that and not just do that when I'm busy. But I have a particular um, piece of red jasper that I picked up in Fiji. Um there's a lot of red jasper in Fiji. It's a volcanic island, of course. Volcanic islands. But this one piece was, was I, noticed I noticed the most vibrant red jasper I had seen there. And so I picked that up. I sanded it last summer, and so now it's all smooth. And I've designated that as to be my um, land healing stone to work with in the very near future and beyond. Yeah, stones are um, super awesome as far as uh, my mentor. She taught me about them. And um, before I was just, you know, going with my gut instinct and, and just doing things that came naturally to me. But it's amazing um, what properties and and um, protections and such that stones do have. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It is, and some of them can be very powerful, especially when they're kept physically intact and energetically um, handled from um, place from person to person if they're traded in the mineral trade. Or also, I think it lends more um, meaning as well as just clearer energy when you can pick up a crystal or. Uh, stone by yourself um rock counting or anything else and just already not have it handled by other people yeah and you were talking about Um, the river and i know my mentor she would take her crystals or whatnot to the river generally during a full moon or what what not to cleanse them and she'd put them in the water and um allow it to be cleansed that way that is a great idea. 
Um, yeah, putting them in running water, especially natural water that's living, is one of one great way to cleanse them. Activating crystals too can be done in sunlight. Um, sunlight cleanses and activates them, activates them. Um, about water though, and rivers and oceans, you have to be really careful not to put smaller stones in um, strong currents or let them be washed away by waves because they will be. And I've actually made that mistake in the past. Um, lost a actually a crystal skull in the ocean. Once. Oh no. It was quite <laughs> unfortunate. Um, I couldn't get it back even though I tried, but yeah, be careful. Be very careful with, um, crystals, especially precious ones near the ocean. Um, sometimes waves can just wash up even if, even if you don't expect it and the waves aren't very rough, you never know. Um, so be cautious with that. And also some stones such as selenite should not be cleansed in water because selenite especially will dissolve as well as things like Himalayan salt and other soft minerals that are water soluble. Um, most stones can be cleansed with water though. So, um, is it okay to put the stones into perhaps like a net bag or something and then, and then put it into the ocean or does that hinder the cleansing process? Well, I can imagine that could work. Um, especially if you hold onto the bag, don't let it get washed away. But yeah, that could work if you have a strong hold on it, um, just to expose it to ocean water. Or even river water, whatever the case may be. See, I didn't, I know that um, selenite's very light and it's got, you know, this chalky sort of look to it. I didn't know that it would dissolve in water. That's pretty intriguing. Learn something new every day. (laughs) That's what I have heard from many people. And I, I haven't tested that myself. I don't want to dissolve my selenites, but I think that is true. Um, I don't have any reason to not believe that. I've never heard anyone say that it's not true. And I've been collecting crystals for most of my life now. Um, yeah, crystals definitely can be beneficial and powerful tools for land healing, as well as just healing in other ways. But crystals are part of the life of the earth itself and so by activating and using them in positive ways then that helps the earth grids um, heal as a living being as a network um, I've been thinking about this for a long time and been on this wavelength that crystals and even plants and everything else is geometry and we see Um, pyrite and fluorite is often um, I don't know if this many other forms out there Um, even the human body and other animal bodies and plants we see are made with geometry Um, so that's interesting how crystals and us can work together. So how has your, um, your new venture been going as far as, you know, hypnosis and such? That's coming along. Um, I probably have a lot to say about that. It's interesting you ask it this time. Of course, that's part of what we're talking about tonight. But I'm just now in the process of um, 
rebranding my hypnotherapy practice and expanding it some too, as I also offer the individual service of intuitive readings for people, spirits and lands. Um, that can be a session by itself, a type of work by itself, as well as I've, I've, um, I've learned Reiki recently, so I can offer, can offer Reiki, Reiki distance healings. I do everything by distance. Um, right now. And my hypnotherapy, um, I'm rebranding that, especially to be more integrative with um, all the energy healing stuff I do in the way that it's kind of what I've always done, but it's a lot more than just hypnotherapy. It's I can't quite call it clinical hypnotherapy, even though I've learned clinical hypnotherapy. That was my original official training in it, but it's a type of integrative energy healing that addresses issues on the um, physical, the mental, emotional, um, energy body and spiritual levels. And just a little while ago today, I was um, receiving a guided meditation from Steve Nobel on YouTube, the Sekhmet transmission um, in which he guides um, people to visit a past life or um, just visit a, a healing temple in Sirius, um, a Syrian temple. And I did. That's where my walking is from anyway. So that was a great experience for me. And what happened there is I met some Syrian beings energetically who confirmed a symbol I've been seeing and sort of drawing recently, a 16-pointed star, um, and confirmed that that would be useful for me to work with energetically and in my healing work. Um, in addition, I got the confirmation that what I've been doing is actually from Sirius in my Syrian lifetimes. Um, with my hypnotherapy, I not only start out, or I start, start out, out with, with, uh, with the hypnotic process of my induction being with that um, high vibrational energy portal that I had talked about earlier above my head, usually starting at the level of the soul star chakra above the head, and then bringing that down to the crown and then gradually down to the whole body and down to the feet. I work with that to um, cleanse and activate, activate and clear the energy body. Um, that's the start. And then once we, once I help the person clear and activate their energy body, we um, basically move with the rainbow light body across the rainbow bridge into their inner landscape. And in their inner landscape, I um, get to know what the landscape is like for them, connect with them energetically. And it's more than just me telling them things. It's I feel like I'm actually there. Um, I pick up on things while they're experiencing it in real time. And so then it becomes not only therapeutic imagery, but quite often angels and ancestors, sometimes fairies or um, spirit guides or their spirits may come through and often do as they're needed for any particular part of a person's healing process. Um, there are many things I can do within the inner landscape with a person. And what that may look like is um, repro, especially with imagery, um, finding images and objects to reprogram, to um, address, to interact with, to learn from, especially with their um, spirit guides or inner wisdom, to guide them 
and help them become clearer on certain things. Um, and then usually transmute or whatever way it needs to be worked with um, an object that represents something in their subconscious or even their inner child or inner self aspects. Um, I've worked with multiple inner personalities in people before and um, help them heal and integrate personality by personality. And in addition to that, we can use tools. Some of my favorite tools I use in my self-hypnosis are um, my angel wings, um, a magic wand of light, um, my sword of truth, um, my lantern just to see things more clearly. Various things can be applied depending on um, what someone is dealing with and what is needed. Of course, I can also guide a person through a past life regression, and that is often therapeutic. Uh, past life regressions are um, also very compatible with um, soul contract healing, which is kind of a separate thing I've learned to do. It's usually not a, se a whole session by itself, but a, a thing within a session that I can apply to guide a person to do their soul contract and learn from them. Um, and that can apply to certain lifetimes and contracts. Um, um, so that's, so kind, that's of kind of the main um, bulk and essence of what I do. Um, so it really becomes more than just clinical hypnosis where tell a person or suggest to a person ideas and healing imagery. It becomes interactive and it becomes a multi-level, multi-dimensional, I think, process that works with the energy body, the mind, body, spirit, the soul, um, spirits, and the subconscious realm I've found is really just like it's unique and personal to everyone in their own programs and their own beliefs and everything in there. But it's also so, when we enter, enter that, that subconscious realm consciously, then that means like a hub between our conscious minds and the rest of the universe and allows us to interact with spirits and spirits to interact with us. Um, sometimes Sometimes, especially when it's appropriate and allowed by our highest self and, um, and it's the best good. Um, as for how things have been going, I've been getting things moving a lot more recently. And at least energetically and doing a lot more. Um, I'm getting back into YouTubing a lot. Um, pretty soon I'll be talking about, and probably making multiple videos, talking about the distinctions between hypnosis and hypnotherapy, and then going to more videos about the types of hypnotherapy and um, what that looks like, what they're for, and um, all that. Because... It's come to my attention more recently that it's become quite an epidemic, in my opinion, that the vast, I think, the vast majority of the general public does not understand what hypnotherapy is. And a lot of people are afraid of it because they think it's stage hypnosis, but it is absolutely not. Um, I can't do anything against anyone's will. I never would. And that's not what hypnotherapy is, that you need to be willing. And this also, um, one last thing ties into um, what I was saying earlier about going into a space just by showing up somewhere in a way you subconsciously give your consent for certain things to happen to you. And in the realm of stage hypnosis, when a stage hypnotist 
for example, would call someone to a stage and um, as a, a volunteer and participate with something or be hypnotized, just by volunteering, raising your hand and going up on the stage, you already give consent for them to get into your subconscious and essentially take control of you. Um, I don't do that. And with my hypnotherapy, I advocate and make sure that um, everyone is in control, aware and sovereign in their own mind and energy and what they're experiencing. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, pretty interesting. And, and I'm one of those people that are kind of fearful of it. And um, it's not the fact that I think they're going to make me do something that I don't want to do or whatnot, but, um, you know, maybe they're going to knock over a table and break a vase or, I don't know, it's kind of weird letting somebody into your head. But at the same time, I've been considering it for different things like smoking or drinking or whatnot. You know, um, I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to do it. Uh, have you been able to help people with, with certain attributes like that? I have. Yeah. A lot of what I've done is um, trauma healing. Some of what I've worked with um, with a number of cases is government um, satanic and ritual abuse or ritual based mind control abuse um, and those survivors and victims of the government um, really reprogramming what's been done to them and this is another thing that is quite deep and because the government has mastered the science of hypnosis um they've done for those who've heard of this and gotten into it or even experienced it themselves they know that they've done some of the most atrocious things to some people um i can do a lot of help just with what i know and what I already am able to do with hypnotherapy. But this is where angels come in too. And angels offer their healing energies to um, also Reiki um, helps to bring Reiki energy in um, to go into deeper levels of the subconscious, subconscious and psyche energy that I don't even know about and sometimes don't even present themselves, but they get healed anyway with such healing energies. Um, and so I've seen great turnaround from that um, with those survivors in particular become a lot more integrated with who they truly are, um, become more integrated with their traumatized inner children or inner selves as they call them. They have different names for them. Um, I have helped some people who've been, some of them have been from this government mind control as a result of it and other trauma, um, mostly the, the government mind control though, um, become compulsive hoarders, become compulsive clutterers. And I've actually helped reprogram that in some of the people I've worked with. And I've seen a great turnaround with that. Um, some people have been living in clutter, um, like excessive clutter and hoarding level clutter for 20 years even of their life or more. Um, they don't know how to break it and they don't know how to stop it or even what it comes from. Some of them do. But some of it definitely came from the government mind control programs and basically by... Um, cluttering and building up structures essentially of their stuff then that subconsciously creates um forts or protectors in a way um even though that's not actually beneficial to them but yeah, yeah like they feel example, secure with you know being in a small space or confined space they feel much more secure that way i suppose um it's kind of like when you put a cow in that rack to milk it like that rack around it. Um, I can't remember her name, but she, I believe she was autistic or um, had something like that going on with her. And um, she actually used the, the cow rack to 
comfort herself and calm herself. But, um, yeah, is that perhaps why people hoard? Like, I know some people are from, like, an older generation or they've lost things or people, and so they hold on to things. But do you think that could be a part of it, too? That definitely is, yeah, especially when you have trouble letting go of things and donating things or gifting things. Um, Sometimes that's the subconscious within you trying to hold on because something feels safe, because something feels comforting, um, and it's afraid of what may happen without it or being without something to comfort, um, to bring comfort. And so, yeah, I've helped people with such conditions to um, literally clean up like 50 to 90% of their home um, declutter, sometimes with the help of an assistant, but declutter their stuff, um, create a lot more order and cleanliness in their home. Um, I've, one thing I do in also cases such as this of, um, with trauma and with, um, attachments, um, I can help people create, um, comfort feelings of comfort and happiness and um just being more content with themselves in different ways um without physical objects but um just learning to do that organically well i don't want to cut you off but we do have to go to our first music break and on this break we have mr brick casey who's from boston and then our other music breaks i i put on tonight in honor of um the reality orphanage so we have nonya toria who is from ghana south africa and she's going to be singing kaki gabon and then we have king cinnamon who is by afra he's from uh by afra nigeria with fantastic and then um Yeah, and then we'll be right back after that. So you guys, don't go anywhere. Hello? All right, so we have about um, 15 minutes for this break. Okay. Um, I just need to start my car car and check my call. Okay, no worries. Text her, put the ticket plane, she's the one to get next to. It's not just the way it's all day with affection. I'm hoping this detection is poor reception. Straight to the machine, mean it's like clicking my car, get connected quick. I'm saying, hey, Mr. Sailor Phone Man, I see there's something wrong with my line. I try to dial my baby's number, but get click every time. Mr. Sailor Phone Man, I see there's something wrong with my line. I try to dial Working in the second time I call, I'm like a little bit hurting. But the third time I call, I'm like going berserk. And now half a day gone, can't get her on the horn. Usually in the morn, maybe it's something wrong. I mean, she wouldn't take this long to call back. See, we tight like that. She's supposed to be mine. So, could you please try it one more time? And Mr. Say the phone, man. I see there's something wrong with my line. I try to dial my baby's number, but get click every time. She's 
king Sinama Oh shee badness Take your bamba man you where you day Play your bamba man it's a Friday Come on let's go it is a holiday Anything you want baby I'm okay Take your bamba man you where you day Play your bamba man it's a Friday Come on let's go it is a holiday Anything you want baby I'm okay Baby got us something Come on closer baby got a night I know you better but I am the king Your backside big got them from day Baby girl Bronco Tom I like the way you want your Bronco Tom Baby girl Bronco Tom I like the way you want your Bronco Tom Jamaica Ghana Shout out to the ladies in Asia Nigeria South Africa Save me love Just touch my body. I go 
Sorry, I lost you for a minute. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, actually. I believe that young women but to the to to get. who they are and what they can do and um, what they have to offer. But with their education, even in primary school, with their high school certificate, then they are able to use that to get jobs after high school in Uganda. Um, some of them may, I suspect, even um, venture outside of Uganda, maybe yeah, in other countries or other continents too. Um, at some point in their lives. That's likely to happen with someone. Um, one thing about Kasengo, the founder that I have learned, is that he was, I think, raised as an orphan. He he was an orphan, and so he knows what it's like to grow up that way, um, not even knowing that he's going to have a meal the next day, um, usually not even having enough money to afford a meal every day. Uh, lately, this in 2022, and sometimes this year even, um, especially last summer when there was a drought in Uganda, many of the kids and him sometimes, even he had to sacrifice more than the kids. Um, he had to sacrifice his meals, usually so that the kids could eat at his orphanage. Um, sometimes the kids didn't even get two meals a day. Sometimes they didn't even get a meal a day. Um, so that's also why I'm doing these fundraisers. This one is designated for the back, this back to school term and to get, um, the goal amount is 400 us dollars so that the kids there can afford to go back to school right now. Um, but also I'm doing more of these fundraisers and will be doing them so that um, hopefully they can reach the right donors and people can donate. Um, like you said, Tessa, even five, ten, twenty, or thirty dollars at a time makes a huge difference in Uganda currency. And um, yeah, some of these fundraisers are and will be for um, just food and clothing and toiletries and medical supplies, basic medical supplies, um, even clean water. They don't even have always clean water at the orphanage. Usually they don't. I know that last summer, um, I don't know if it's always this way. I suspect it's not. But last summer, because there was a drought, um, some of the orphans, I think the, all of the orphans in Kasengo had to drink um, polluted water from a I'm not sure what it is exactly. Either it's a sewer or a, a drainage pipe of some sort, but it was dirty water. I, it's um, an awful situation they had to go through and still do. It's not over. Um, so this is a side project I've been working on in addition to my hypnotherapy practice to get 
funds for them to even live a half decent life over there at the reality orphanage. Um, I also want to make it clear that I'm not donating money and working through global organizations such as um, UNICEF or others. I know there are a number of um, organizations that do charities like this, but I'm not saying UNICEF entirely or all the charities entirely are um, ineffective, but some of the large ones I've heard are. And Casano has actually requested not to work with UNICEF because he tried with them, but um, I don't know actually what his experience was or what they did, but according to him, they're more like office people and not um, it's on the ground people and getting him what he needed. So anyway, um, that's his choice. I did not make the decision myself not to work with UNICEF, but that's his choice. And I also want to make it clear that I'm, I've gotten to know him and I am not, um, I'm not donating money or asking money to go somewhere that nobody knows where it's going. Yeah, and to me, um, like I was going to say, it's ridiculous because a lot of these people that are running these things are making so much money. And it's like, I don't know, I think people should be in it just for charity or or doing for your fellow man and not, not for the paycheck. Like, I don't know. And I know people yeah. need, to, need to have money to survive, but at the same time, like, I don't know, can't you have a, a real job or another job? That makes you money instead of taking from the foundation. For me, that's just like a sort of catch-22 or whatnot. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, and I agree. I believe that it's okay to get paid and have you some Yeah, your sound went kind of wonky all of a sudden. Audio engine. Yeah, you sound like a robot. Sounds clear now. Okay. <laughs> that was um, weird. What happened? <laughs> maybe there's some interference on my end. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe there's some interference over here. Um, anyway, so where was I? Yeah, it's unfortunate that some large charity organizations, um, not all of them, I know that some actually do the actual work and make a big difference, but um, it's okay, I believe it's okay to make money to live for charity work, if that's what you do. And I definitely support that. I, um, I looked into that myself at one point, but... That's not where I'm at, or I guess not what I'm meant to do. Um, but at the same time, even if you're getting paid for charity work, I think that that should actually make a big difference in helping people live and be healthy. Um, even if you do some office work. Anyway, um, we can't really do anything about that right now. So let's go back to talking about the fundraiser and his children. I'm hoping that Kasenga will come on soon. I know he's been having trouble um, with this um, platform. I think he's going to keep trying to get on. Um, yeah, for sure. And he actually came through for a second and then said that his mic and such wasn't set up. And then... Um, I clicked to Adam and he was there for a second and then he was gone. So I don't know if it's like reception or, or what's going on with that, but um, I've repeatedly sent him the link and I'm hoping it works. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's, I think it's just because of where he's at in Uganda, maybe his phone connection, but there's been times I've had live calls with him and sometimes he has um, the call has dropped or um, it like it answered for a little bit, but then um, 
I don't know if it was an accident, but somehow it hung up. It hung up, and then um, he called back or something like that. Anyway, um, hopefully he'll come on soon, and then he can share a lot more from his perspective of what it's actually like over there. Yeah, for them to be having to drink that gray water or sewer water or whatever the heck it was, like, that's insane. Yeah, did you um, see any of those pictures? Maybe I could send you some if I can find them. But yeah, even that idea not being able to drink clear water um, is quite unfortunate. And I think even in my life, because I've been doing these fundraisers and helping him a little bit. Um, I've been thinking about how much money I'm spending and how fortunate I am. And I'm sure most Americans are and other developed countries too, to um, be able to live even in a house or an apartment or um, be able to have a few meals, good meals every day. And also be able to have good, clean water, which should be a human right. And I don't know what the underground water situation is there is like, if there might be a well possibility. But at some point, he wants to get a clean water system. Um, this is another thing I want to do more fundraisers for, is getting them a clean water system, because... Um, he shared with me, I think it was last summer, last year anyway, that it cost like, I don't know, a few thousand American dollars maybe worth, maybe I have that wrong, but a good sum of money, even for him or um, some Americans possibly, just to get a clean water system installed for the orphanage. Um, probably well water, I'm guessing is what it is. Um, maybe I should look into their alternatives too that could work out for him. But yeah, it was only partly installed and he was able to pay off like a third of it. And then um, I guess the guy installing it stopped because it couldn't be paid for completely. And So I don't know what will happen with that project. But I hope to get them a clean water system at some point or hopefully they can. And that's yeah, that'd be awesome. Before, I know that um, I, ha I didn't think about this until now, but I know that there are um, sustainable new technologies that have been employed in other areas of Africa. Um, basically, some inventions that take water out of the air. Okay. I, I don't know if those cost much or what they are. I'll have to look into those. Um, but basically they um, accumulate moisture out of the air to make enough water for people to live. So, so we will see about that. Okay, so I'm thinking yeah. um, maybe if he sends a video or something, we can play that. So I don't know if he could just record and send it to us. Because it shows here, you know, slides, extra camera, video file, share screen. Um, so I wonder, too, I don't know, if I if I call him on Messenger, if he, he can get through that way and I could share the screen and, and he can do what he needs to do. So I'll ask him and, and see if we can do that and see if that'll pop up. Maybe. Hopefully at least audio could work. Right. Um, try that and, yeah, hopefully we can get him on. Yeah, but water's super important, and, like, when I heard that about the guy stopped working or whatever because he wasn't getting paid, it's like, I don't know, like, for me, I'd be over there and I'd see those kids, and, you know, everybody has taxes and stuff like that. Like, can't you write it off your taxes or something? Like, something's got to give. I feel so bad. Yeah. Um, it is quite heartbreaking to see what's happening with them. I'm sure... The Reality Orphanage in the Mayuge area um, might be in eastern Uganda. I'm not actually sure quite 
part of it, a Uganda it's in. I tried looking it up, but I couldn't. Uh, maybe it's just so small, but I couldn't find Uganda um, from a basic map search. Um, or Mayuge. Anyway, I know it's a town. I've seen videos of it. It's an actual town, but they live outside of the town. Um, so, where was I going with that? Um, yeah, about wells. I've been thinking about this, and I'm still not... I don't have this all together. I'm still into this fundraising thing, relatively new. But I'm hoping that we can find ways of getting this fundraiser to the right people and um, donors and the philanthropists. And with so many, I don't know, massive, massive amounts of money um, being hoarded and spent and circulated within the ultra wealthy of America and developed countries, as well as huge amounts of money um, going to military funding, which we can't really change that yet, but I'm hoping that at least civilian crowdfunding can come together and even beyond the reality orphanage, I hope that um, more just more of this excess wealth going around among some people can help them um, live better and go towards um, fundraisers such as this for charity. Um, I don't think it's something we can change right now. I don't know if they'd be willing to, but I know that the government, especially U.S. government, puts a huge amount of money, probably tr um, is it trillions of dollars, maybe just millions of dollars a day um, into war. And not just the military, but war. And um, some of that's essential for defense from terrorists, but... Um, yeah, I've always wanted to, for humans to find better ways to divert that money. Millions of dollars each day. Um, if that didn't go to war, if that didn't need to, that could definitely fix a lot of the world's issues. Yeah, it's super important. And I um, just shared another post with pictures of these cute kids because like i was saying like i think it's important that people are, are like able to see them and um i don't know it just puts that human face or whatnot in there where people are more driven but yeah they're so cute and i know that he was you know worried about them being loud and excited and whatnot but um i love that i love that about them um, just that that excitement and that thrill for life and, and whatnot. So I'm yeah. hoping, hoping we can raise some money. Um, I know that GoFundMe is um, it's a good thing, but at the same time, they, they take a percentage too. And it's just, you know, the name of the game as far as that goes. Um, but yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, yeah. That's... I think mostly for operational costs, which I think it's only like two or three percent, if I have that correct. But still, um, it helps because they are for fundraising and um, getting people the money they need. Um, yeah, and the link that I've been using to send the money, which it says it doesn't take from either party, is SendWave. So that's another way um, that you can send money and perhaps I can share that. And I was just like, why is it in somebody else's name? But I guess that's their accountant or whatnot. And she's the one or he, I'm not sure, that takes care of the funds. Bul uh, Bulgario Ag Agnes? Yeah. yeah. Um, that's right. And that is the same case with... Um, 
what is it? One of the other um, money sending platforms that's linked up on newbeinghypnosis.com and um, the Reality Orphanage. Um, I think it's Mayuge, Mayuge Uganda and that website dot com or whatever it is, but that's linked up on newbeinghypnosis.com anyway on the homepage. Um, that can, um, Remitly is the one I've used. They also don't take a percentage. It's just, it's kind of like PayPal, I think. Um, 100% of the money goes through and it goes directly to their banker. Um, and I think it's, it goes to that person's name because that's the account holder or something. But still, um, Castanio gets the money. The account holder, that accountant, doesn't get the money at all. It's just their account, and then Castanio can get the money as soon as it's transferred, which usually takes a matter of minutes. Yeah, once you get it set up, it's so time. simple. Yeah. Um, Remitly is very simple. I don't know how they do this so securely, but they do. The times I've sent donations through there, um, I don't even know if I needed to put in, like, maybe that I, they needed my, like, social security number or something at first. Or I think they just needed my bank account number, U.S. bank account number, where I'm sending from at first, and that's all. Um, but they don't even need much, and once they get that once, um, that just stays in a secure account, and um, yeah, it's pretty quick. They don't even ask you to put in your bank account number every time, or social security number. Um, I think I just put in my my um, my name or something, and select the bank account. Mm-hmm. Um, Bio yeah, and I think there was like a like a confirmation email or something like that that you have to do, which is good, you know. Um, but yeah, I've yeah. been doing this since December, and I've had no fraudulent transactions or anything on my account. Everything is good to go, and I don't know. It just makes me feel better as a human being to be able to help them, as little as it may be. But, you know, I don't know. I feel better doing something. I do too. Um, I'm glad that I have been able to donate sometimes, even if it's only been several times, I think, so far. But um, yeah, it's always nice to uh, have some extra wealth to be able to share with, even if it's not um, buying gifts for friends or family, it's nice to be able to share a little extra with um, someone who needs it. And this is, Kasenga was a person I've gotten to know, mostly through Facebook Messenger, but I've gotten to know him, and so I know that he and his orphaned um, children he takes care of need help, and so I also feel blessed when I'm able to do that. Yeah, I, um, I first did it for their Christmas party. I'm like, they have to have food and, and these other things. And I felt bad because it was so little. But um, seriously, it was it was a good thing. It made me feel good. And yeah. I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, that was the best Christmas present that I gave this year. And um, see their happy, smiling faces. And, and to know that they had food and they were able to... Um, I don't know, use the funds for whatever they need. And it's amazing um, how they go out into their own community and they volunteer and they help others. It is. Yeah. Um, they do. That was especially you're going to be part of their Christmas, um, Christmas program. Unfortunately, we didn't get all the funds raised. It was like, I forget, five or six hundred dollars USD at least, maybe more, worth of um, funds they needed to meet their um, planned uh, ideas, which most of which were not only 
a Christmas party with food and maybe some gifts, but um, most of it was community help and community fundraising and spiritual education, which mostly means Christian, but still spiritual education and um, community outreach and um, yeah, that. So it's very meaningful. Uh, most of what they do is not just for themselves either. They uh, they do mostly act, I think, for the community and for each other. Um, I've been on this wavelength too for a long time. Um, not so much acting on it as much as I am now, but I've believed that um, we are all a connected species and we have, especially those of us who have some wealth, um, I think have this almost obligation or um, it's certainly important, I feel, to um, share extra, share excess with um, others and um, it was Michael Tellinger who originally brought this word to me, but Ubuntu is an African word that I think is common among most of Africa, if not all. Um, it means um, contributionism, and that is mostly a tribal thing, I believe, but I also believe that it can be extended to all of humanity and contribute to the functioning and well-being and support of um, people more than just yourself and the tribe, and then it it circulates. Um, another thing I heard about about Ubuntu is that they're so connected in some tribes of Africa, um, traditionally at least, that, and I think still that when a person does something wrong, instead of being shunned and punished for their wrongdoing, um, they're usually encircled um, kind of in a similar way almost by their village people, um, by the people in their people tribe. Are... And then the people tell them positive things about who they are and their positive character. Oh shit! We almost had him. Oh, yeah, Casango yeah. oh. might be on with us soon, so hopefully you will. Yeah, so yeah. that's um a bit about Ubuntu that I've heard of. I hope I'm sharing that correctly, but um, contributionism and oneness, basically, with the community. Well, it's so important and um, it's a big deal to me, like, you know, karmically and that might sound selfish, like, you know, if you do for somebody else, you're going to have blessings. And a lot of times it goes the opposite direction, but it's very important for us to help each other, whether it's your neighbor or like Casano and, and the kids, you know, over there in Africa. Um, and a lot of people think, well, you know, people here need help. Well, that's true. But people everywhere need help, and um, I don't know. If we could just work together and get this done, it'd be amazing. Um, so do you have any idea how Cassano, uh became a orphan? I don't know about the details of that story. I know that he was an orphan as a child. Um, yeah, I just don't know that of course there must have been ways that people took care of him and he was able to um grow up i might have this um incorrect i'm not sure but i think he didn't even um mm -hmm. finish primary schooling high school even which is why he doesn't have another um official job like in town or anything um, but he created this orphanage anyway. Um, and so he did this because he wants to offer um, a home of some sort to orphaned 
children um, who need somewhere to go. And um, this is actually kind of, I think, a Uganda-wide um, problem with the possibly government and at least country. Um, more than just the reality orphanage, but it's, I think, Uganda-wide that young women um, often need to marry to be able to get money sometimes to finish school or after um, high school graduation, but to be able to um, have a home. Otherwise, some of them become, a lot of them become orphaned and um, all the all the troubles, all the troubles that come, that with, come that with that type of life. Um, yeah, so then they become married and usually have children at a young age um, quite often. And that's why there's somewhat of a a premature birth and then orphanage and orphaned children um, problem or kind of widespread issue in Uganda. Um, because this is such a cultural thing that also there's not much in the way of um, sexual education with um, it's so teenagers. important over there too because I know the AIDS epidemic um, yeah is a big reason that there's so many orphans oh, Hi, hello welcome oh shit oh, we lost him again oh. <laughs> oh he's trying to come back my network my network uh, Hello. Hello. Congratulations Hello. on getting accepted to high school. I'm so proud of you. Thanks. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Auntie Sarah, for this good opportunity that you have given to us. Thank you so much. Brother Troy, thank you so much for this good, big opportunity. My God bless you and God bless you. Back to school. Back to school foundation as a program. Kasha is here. Just finished PLE exams, squad 12, aggregates. And he's so happy for the support towards us and him and, and others at orphanage. We are so happy. A good birthday of everyone who is us, everyone that is is willing to support us, everyone that has ever supported us. A good birthday and everyone. I want everyone to hear from Wukasha names and what the dreams as as an orphan, the stories all because Wukasha is is among the kids that I that I that started with in 2018. So I want to hear from him. To tell you the stories, our parents and what, because for me, just found cash on the streets, the community, community streets. So I said to bring him to the orphanage, just because Kasha's parents were too drunk. So I said to bring Kasha around the orphanage. She started life out, give him a good hope for better tomorrow, because that all is. All of us, we are for have a better more, have a better future. For for better future, so you have better family in future. Or you bring light for others in life. Let me give this opportunity to Kasha to tell you more about herself, himself, the story, Kasha. Hey, Kasha. <coughs> Good morning to everyone. My name is Ukasha. Uh, I'm going to join S1 this year. I'm going to join high school this year. And I thank everyone who has ever supported, supported us. Um, I joined this, this orphanage in 2018. Reality orphanage Maige. And I thank everyone who is supporting us and willing to support us. Me and the other, my sisters and brothers. This is our director, Samuel, and he's, and he's, and he's, he's, he's also supporting us to continue with our studies. Again, this, this, 
This director found me on this director found me on the street and he brought me he brought me in the orphanage. He started taking care of me and the other brothers and sisters which I'm representing. Yes. Kasha is not really, is not clear, maybe in English, but at least you can hear him who is the little. I think he did a very good job. Yeah. I understood what he was saying. I could hear that. Okay, that's quite clear. Kasha, you can call upon everyone that is listening, that is watching this video to support you, to support your fellow brother and sister that you are representing right here. Yes, call upon everyone that is watching and is listening to this. I call upon everyone who is listening. Yes. yes. Who is listening and watching this, this video to support us, me and the other brothers and sisters which I'm representing. And there is... I also thank and I also thank everyone who has supported us, who has supported me to 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 complete my my primary my primary studies, and I'm going to join the high school this year. I'm so I'm so happy that you supported me in the primary levels. I completed them, and my my dreams I want I wanna be a pilot. In future, and brother Samuel, is, brother Samuel is, is supporting me to complete it, to complete my my dreams. He found as a word from Ukasha wants to be a parrot in the future, but I can't make Ukasha's dream come true without your support. So I want to join hands with you, everyone that is watching and listening to us. Please come up and support us with anything you can. Cash wants to be a Kasha wants to be a pilot. I have brother Troy. I hope the other time we heard from other other kids. They want to be teachers. They want to be they want to be doctors. They want to be journalists. So that's all. So different dreams. Different dreams and goals, but all of them, they all, they, all of them want to give them the right and to achieve their goals. So right now, all, future. Yes. At first, we want to talk, we want to talk about the reason is why each and everyone wants to be in school. Each and everyone wants to be educated. The reason is why everyone wants to be educated in this world, because here in Uganda. You can't try anything. You can't do anything without being educated. There are reasons why you have to be in school, why kids have to go to school. There are reasons, a lot of reasons. The first, the first reason why someone has to be in school, why someone has to be educated, is about communication. 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 Because you can't communicate with someone at a certain level when you're speaking your local language. If if I was not educated or I was not even gained a little that I, I speak right now, I have been not communicated with you because for you don't know our local language. Unless we speak Rusoga, for you don't know Rusoga. So communication is the key to everything. If someone gains gets communication or someone gets communication, that's all. Social skills. There's social skills. Social skills. Skills like listening, using manners, respecting personal spaces, and cooperation. Point number three is sense, sense of accomplishment. Sense of accomplishment. Then, more productive to the community. If someone is, educa is educated in a community, to be productive not unproductive, maybe in the meetings, planning, doing everything for the good of the community. That's being educated. So if you reach someone who's not educated, will be with no plan at the moment, we we'll look for nothing to do, that's all. Better 
communication with others critical thinking and minds critical thinking so if you find someone with that who will not be educated will be with no critical thinking as personal critical thinking so i don't think that everyone that is out there that is listening to us wants the students to be like in such form when troy brought it to my um my attention that you were actually an orphan as well and and so to me it's awesome and um a true blessing that you're out there helping other kids that are going through the same thing that you went through yes for me it was once as I explained to you at first, I was once an orphan, and that's why I came out to fight for desperate lives like Yukasha and the other children that they call of. That's why I'm here, to raise your voice for them, to sound for them, because they can't speak as I was still younger, like me, the way I was. So that's why I'm here. That's why I started the Eight of Anamari in 2018, to give a renew, renewed hope for them. Or they are better tomorrow. That's what or that's what I want to do. That's what I do for them. Because that's what I do because that's what I do. That's what I, I have not reached the level that I want. Because there's more 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 children here in the community and other villages that are suffering mm-hmm. that have not yet uh, due to due to lack of funds in supporting them with all requirements that are needed, maybe in sleeping, sleeping, eating, all education. Because even this one that I have, they have not yet even been their necessary requirements as as kids. Like decker beds, food in time, then and the others, mosquito nets, mattresses, all. Just, just an example. So, that's what I fight for. As someone as a little bit of an animal I don't so want this you... to be like me. Mm-hmm. I don't want this you... to be like me. Right. Um, I'm just curious. Did you start the orphanage or did you find the orphanage and decide to work there? Or how did that all come about? Yes, that came about just because I was once this... So I decided to set up an orphanage faithful for the kids like Ukasha, Cherry, Patrick, Juma, and others. I'll, as I explained in my story, that I grew up in a loving family that showed love to me. The family that I was not even dated to, so they showed how someone has to be loved, how, how really someone how can you show love to someone that you are not even related to? After gaining the experience that you have to do with a loving heart, even though someone is not related to you, you have to love him or her. They will love yourself, they will love your kids. So I said to set up an opening in 2018 to fight for the support lives like Ukasha, Cherry, and others. So that's how I came with an orphanage faithful this part of lives like Kukasha, Juma and others. Then I was still giving the reasons why someone has to be has to be educated, someone has to get education. Identification of skills, that is a point for someone to be educated. Great sense of discipline. Great sense of discipline. Here in Africa, we have here in Africa we have our cultural disciplines. So if someone is not educated more, would have gained anything like culture or discipline, cultural discipline, sense of discipline in him or her. Yes, after that, we have get the disadvantages that the disadvantage of someone being uneducated here in Uganda. There is what we call economic crisis of the COVID-19. This brings the low wages, yeah. the low salaries, the, the community, which leads to low wages, which came due to COVID-19 in our community. Low crisis of Ukraine, Ukrainian war, 
which leads low wages, leading some, some of the children to drop out. This COVID-19 causes many of the children to drop out from schools. I hope Brother Troy and Tessa saw the post that I posted of a young girl was of 13 years. That girl was in our community. Then, and he was very young. He was a certain year. Certain years, yes. Certain years. She got married at her early age. 13, just because she got pregnant. But this came just due to COVID-19. COVID-19. And he dropped out of school. Yeah, it ruined a lot of stuff. Yes. He dropped out of school. He started life, but had, which life here in Africa? Had, had, had life without having education. That's had life, had life in Africa. Africa. I've ever seen so many girls, so many young boys suffering. You're suffering. <laughs> then we have drop out of school due to lockdown. This lockdown really affected us a lot. Many children dropped out, dropped out due to lockdown. So as of two years, no schooling, no what. So yeah, no, it's not no like here. Like here, we did out. online school, but you guys don't have that, really, right? I beg your pardon. Um, here, when we had the lockdown, um, I had to school my kids, and we had to do like online schooling and such. But you guys don't don't really have that, correct? Yes, we tried that. We are having homeschooling. That's why, for me and the kids, we never had the, the, all the required materials for the children to learn at home. But we tried our level best to give them at least some. In COVID nineteen, we tried our level best as orphanage. But I'm talking about the situation that if these children are not in, in the orphanage and they have they're out of the orphanage. What will get experience if you don't give them, if you don't give them light of schooling, light of being in school? What will happen to them? That's what I'm trying to explain more. If not giving them light to know how someone, the education, someone not being educated, how will it look like to them? So I was giving you drop out of the lockdown. That was explained. Child labor. Here in Africa, Uganda, mostly in our in our region, if someone if 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 a child drops out of school, he starts what called child labor, like sugarcane cutting. In eastern regions, have sugarcane cutting. It's dangerous, but they go with that just because they have dropped out due to lack of funds to support them in school. Drug abuse and peer groups. They don't have, they don't have funds, but they, they run for drugs, peer groups, and so many others. When they're still young, nine years, eight, ten. That's what really we not, that's what we don't want for these children to go for. We want them to give them the nude, the light, the bright future for better tomorrow. So, I call upon everyone that is watching, please support us, support our of in Uganda with anything you can. Kasha is heading to high school, but now she has been it almost a week, a week, and it's now a week, not schooling, due to lack of, due to lack of funds. With lack of funds, like buying the equipment, tuition, and other things. Plus, they fell brothers and sisters for, for him. The next point was is early pregnancy. Early pregnancy, early pregnancy, which causes other marriages. If children, if young girls are desperate, let them no schooling, they they end for. Boys for boys, so ending up having other pregnancies, which causes other marriages. By this kind of not not having school, not having not having not, not schooling. So 
I call upon everyone. I normally post such things about our marriages in Africa. Uganda, Eastern, Eastern region. Our region, our region is ranked in the all Uganda as the poorest region. It's ranked as the poorest region in Uganda, Eastern region. It's ranked with a highly marriage rate in the all Uganda. But this, what causes this? The dropouts and lack of funds to support them in school. Yeah. So it's ranked as the poorest. It's ranked as the poorest in the all Uganda. The poorest is region in the all Uganda. It's our region that we are in, and with high marriage rate in all Uganda, Mayuge district. But what is because this real? Someone not being educated, drop out of school due to lack of funds. Child abuse, so just to just to on streets. So, but if you come up and support one kid, one child at the age of in Uganda, it will be giving him a new hope for better tomorrow. So, so I call upon yeah. everyone that is watching this video, please. They're definitely um, the bright future for not only your village but your country and even the world. And um, and like you were saying earlier, uh, the post that I was sharing with everyone, even the smallest amount helps. If everybody could just donate the smallest amount, it will help so much because every little penny adds up. Yes, that you said that is that what you said is right. As you are seeing, this is the budget. This is the budget. All the items that are required for the child are here. As we are seeing, this mm-hmm. is the budget. There is even 1.1 USA dollar. 1.1 USA dollar. Six, five. Then we have 1.4. All these. So I call upon everyone with anything you can. What will be five, 1.1, 3, 10, 20, anything you can. Anything you can to support this should go back to school. Because I don't think that there's anyone there, there's anyone there yeah, yeah. that wants someone to not be educated. I know what I know you know what education means to someone. So important. I never I know that everyone that's watching this video know what education means to someone. I know that you know that being 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 uneducated in this world in Africa here right now, go nowhere. Jobs, you can you can't search for job without without certificates here in Uganda. The reason why I don't have a job, a professional job, just because I, I'm not a graduate and I'm not having a profession in anything that I can do with a certificate. My me myself. I never completed my academics just because I never had money. The people that raised me, they never had money. They supported me because it was what with what with what they managed. So I stopped there. I never completed my academics. And my dreams ended there. So I don't want my, these children's dreams to end. Mm, you're still following your dreams, though. Look at you. Look what you've done. Look how good you're doing. But, yes, I see what you're saying. Like, with an education, imagine how much further that you could have gone, you know. Um, but I'm proud of you. And I think you're doing a very good job. Um, we do have to go to our second music break. And then we'll come back. Um, Akasha, congratulations on being accepted to high school. I'm so proud of you. And I hope that what we're doing tonight, we can raise some funds and um, get you everything you need. So um, on this music break, we have Mr. Brick Casey with Main Thing. And then we have Nonye uh, Toria. She is from Ghana, South Africa. She's going to be singing Paper Loving. It's a remix, and it's featuring this guy named Chris. And then she's going to sing Yanga Monyaye. And then, yeah, we'll be right back, right after this music break. And this break is about 15 minutes. So um, I don't know if you want to bring 
Babirye or uh, whatever her name is or uh, any other kids for us to meet, uh, feel free to do that on our music break and we'll get right back to it shortly. I like it when you pop it, drop it, swing. Now I don't stop it, doing that thing. I hate to Coco cut you girl, off, keep but doing that thing. I just want to make you my main thing. Keep going, baby. Now don't stop that thing. Slack on, come to the money, honey. I'ma get a stack on. Excuse me, mom. Can I get my Mac on? To the left, Ten. throw it to Ten. the right. Ooh. Do it like Ooh. you wanna do it to me all night. Ooh. From Ooh. the block, kid, know how to act hard. Like brick house, women with a fat backyard. Yeah. In the club with me and my man's killing that. In the back door with me and my man chilling that. Chillin I'm that. on the floor, I'm like, damn, she killing that. It's going down, no cop around, feeling that. Feeling that. Fly, I'm a god that I get him. Get him, play a light. Me, me, two of you with him. With him. Call with you with a lollipop, and I wanna lick up you. Yep. Number one, my top choice of pick. Yeah, yeah. Give it to me, mom. Go. Go, girl, now nah, don't stop. Oh, no, girl, break it down for me. Get it, get it gone. Can you keep it going? Oh, no, no, no. Now give it to me, mom. Go, go, girl, now nah, don't stop. Oh, no, girl, hey, break it down for me. Get it, get it gone. Cause you got it going. Oh, no, no, no. Can't deny the way that you too fly. Anytime that I look you in the eye, a phenomenon that I can't explain. Like the things you're doing to my brain. You the only one to take away my pain. I just wanna make you my main thing. I like it when you pop that, drop that, keep going. Baby, now don't you stop that uh, Can't stop thinking about how you move And all the things that I'ma do to you True, this might be a little bit strange Don't care if I don't even know your name That's why I wanna tell you this simple and plain I just wanna make you my main thing I like it when you pop that, drop that Keep going, baby, now don't you stop that uh, them chicks all thick with the pumps on Lumps in the front, back with the bumps on Not a cat hoping that he get his humps on I'm way beyond with the mother chumps on Sweet enough to eat and he might bite you When I make you. love to you, I don't wanna fight you Not a body like you, not a one like you When you come around, no telling what he might do Right now in the club, who the dawn? Don't a man that got it going on later on I can tell by the dancing, you digging this song You can tell I've been digging you all night long And I love to be digging in you all night long Party right here, hottie all night long Let's flex it to the coat check, exit to the Lexus, Nexus, Triple Lexus. Lexus. Come on, give it to me, mom. Go, go, girl. Now nah, don't stop. Oh, no, girl. Break it down for me. Hit it, get it gone. Can you keep it going? Oh, no, no, no. Now give it to me, mom. Go, go, girl. Now nah, don't stop. Oh, no, girl. Hey, break it down for me. Hit it, get it gone. Cause you got it going. Oh, no, no, no. I like it when you pop it, drop it, swing. Now nah, don't stop it. Doing that thing. Go, go, girl. Keep doing that thing. I just want to make you my main thing. I like it when you pop it, drop it, swing. Now nah, don't stop it. Doing that thing. Go, go, girl, keep doing that thing. I just wanna make you my main thing. Vanilla chocolate flavor, girl. The only one that I'm searching for. You the one for me, and I can't complain. You sunshine anytime it rains. Not around, then I might go insane. I just wanna make you my main thing. I like it when you pop that, drop that, keep going, baby. Now don't you stop that. Uh, honey, you so sweet, I can't ignore. Thinking about you, boo, more and more. Making it pop and drop and swing. I could be the king if you my queen. Yeah, look good, but you. I just wanna make you my main thing. I like it when you pop that, drop that, keep going, baby. Now don't you stop that. Oh, can't oh, can't yeah. deny that you're too fly. And the time that I look you in the eye, a phenomenon that I can't explain. Like the things you're doing to my brain, you the only wanna take away my pain. I just wanna make you my main thing. I like it when you pop that, drop that, keep going, baby. Now don't you stop that. Uh, can't stop thinking about how you move and all the things that I'ma do to you. True, this might be a little bit strange. Don't care if I don't even know your name. That's why I wanna tell you this simple and plain. I just wanna make you my main thing. I like it when you pop that, drop that, keep going, baby. Now don't you stop that. Oh, that. She know, she know, she know She know me treat her better than her man But she a worry about the millions, the millions, the millions You love me if it's true But certain things in life you say you want to do hey. So you say me need to understand that You are made for a money man But if you can't love me now, don't love me later 
man later is much greater. It only proves that you love the paper, my paper. Boy, me gon' love you now, me gon' love you later. When you're later is much greater. Cause me a one man trafficator, trafficator. Yeah. You say I love him, but I love you more. He took me shopping sprees and bought me liner. But a crown is more. You're the one that gave me proper loving. Proves that you love the paper, my paper, paper. Boy, me gon' love you now, me gon' love you later. When you're later, is much greater. Cause me a one man trafficator, trafficator. But that no means to you for sell it all for vanity, you know. Bright lights, fast cars, I just see I And the fast lane make you lose your sanity. But me can't believe it, tell yourself so short. Forget the money you will make, man, break your past. But you up for your life, make your choice because me now make you break my heart. No, if you can't love me now, don't love me later. When my later is much greater, it only proves that you love the paper. It only proves that you love the paper, 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 paper. Boy, me gon' love you now, me gon' love you later When you're later, it's much greater Cause me a one-man trafficator, trafficator yeah. I wanted to learn the hard way So I'm taking you to love at school You want money just, just for parties, yeah You take me for fool Every piece of my heart I gave away I gave it away to you Why don't you understand, babe? What I feel for you is true So If you can't love me now, don't love me later When my later is much greater It only proves that you love the paper My paper, the paper. Boy, me gon' love you now, me gon' love you later When your later is much greater
to talk about talk about to hear 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 to um, but most definitely, uh, very important to hear more points of what his goal is. And, um, you know, for him, I know that's one of his regrets in life is that he didn't get the full education that he could have had. But he's doing such an amazing job, even though um, he didn't complete that. But definitely super epic. I'm so proud of him and Akasha. And I'm hoping he comes back on with... Um, Oh man, I'm so bad with names. Let me see if I can find it again. Yeah, these kids are just so cute. Another child. So I believe her name was. Hold on, let me look. I went the wrong way. Babirie, Babirie, Bab. I don't know. Um, I'm not good at pronunciation either, but <laughs> um, yeah, he. She's the one that he was talking about as far as, like, he wants to continue her education so she doesn't depend on marriage or whatnot in order to, you know, live her life. And for me, that'd be yeah. super important for her to just be, you know, an uh, individual and be able to have her own prospect of life instead of trying to depend on somebody else. I agree. And, of course, it's one thing to talk about oh. that being such a widespread on. issue as um, teenage marriage in Uganda or even teenage pregnancy. Um, that's also a problem because of lack of sex education. I just can't hear you. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me Can now? you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was yeah, saying that it's, it's, it's one thing, one thing to, to be talking, be talking about, about this problem in Uganda, in Uganda of um, teenage, teenage marriage, marriage and teenage pregnancy. pregnancy. Um, um, for money, for money um, and for lack, for lack of such a sex education, sex education usually. usually. But, but it's another it's, that I've actually seen pictures um, of a young woman. I think she's only 13 or 14. Um, she gave birth at... Um, or was it? Anyway, to give birth to a young baby just like uh, two or three months ago, maybe. And she's and, a baby herself. Uh, yeah, um, that was posted on Facebook. I think it's probably still on Saving the Reality Orphanage group that I started for them so that people can see the um, what they're going through and some of the difference that donations make for them. Um, Kasango posts on there regularly. And anyway, I saw this, this young, um, young woman, um, I think she's about 13 or 14, and her baby... And so that's another um, couple individuals now that need help at the orphanage. Um, so it's not just children who can walk and talk and do things. It's also a baby now and toddlers at the orphanage too, the reality orphanage. And that's another reason that it's so important and meaningful to me too, to get donations to them so that um, they those basically babies don't have to um, grow up in very poor conditions and grow up drinking dirty water or um, even not having enough food every day. Um, I don't think, I don't, I believe that no person on earth should be raised in substandard conditions. Um, that's one thing especially that has um, become much more of a solid belief since my walk-in. Um, I think it comes from the serious aspect of my walk-in from Sirius A that um, something I'll be talking about more, more soon, than probably about in my autobiography too, is um, some of the basic and even advanced beliefs of Syrian cosmology um, that I just 
know and came in with that they're not Buddhism, but they're honestly similar to Buddhism in some ways. And one of the core um, tenets of that is um, seeing every single living sentient being as something and someone very sacred and deserving of the same equal opportunities, certainly opportunities to become what they wish and live the life that they wish. Yeah, and I think I just found that photo of the girl you were talking about just holding her baby there in the red dress or shirt. I'm not sure if that's a dress or shirt, but... Yeah. Yeah, th I know that was posted on Saving the Reality Orphanage mm -hmm. on Facebook. Yeah, I did just not find it as I was scrolling through and saving pictures to share yet another link for people to go and uh, donate to. And I don't know, it's super important for us to do this. And the whole world affects all of us. It's kind of like the butterfly effect. But, you know, we can help people overseas or whatnot to accomplish their dreams. And and like Kasanya was uh, talking about, like, this stuff is super important to get their education and to be able to become um, individuals with a bright, you know, prospect or future. Um, yeah. So important. I believe that. And um, even though one orphanage seems small, um, each life there is sacred, as I was saying, just as every other life is, and no one should have to be forced to um, basically be impoverished and suffer um, if they want better conditions. And yeah, this, yeah. This, this does affect the rest of the world too. And even if, even it, if isn't it isn't like a, like dramatic, a dramatic, dramatic effect by donating a little bit to help um, even once, even once or, or multiple or times to help the reality orphanage, that energetically helps um, the collective because we are all a collective, even though our biological bodies are individual um, and seemingly separate. Not only do we share resources, but um, it's collective consciousness. And I see that in the way that... Um, I've I've attracted people, um, some positive and negative and various types to me subconsciously and everyone does. Um we um I'm trying to think of examples of this. But yeah, it's basically collective consciousness in the way that when we uplift one, one other, other person, person that and uplifts the rest of the world. In the same way, if we just allow them to continue suffering and um, in what some people would call failing or um, maybe not failing, um, but yeah, living in kind of chaotic ways, um, then that affects the rest of us too negatively. And so why not just make a better world for all of us? Yeah, I just can't. Uh, okay, so I, there he is. Hopefully, it works this time again. Damn it! Oh, mm. almost. Well, he's trying to get on again. I'm just gonna say, keep trying. Don't give up. We got this. Um, yeah, Ukasha, I'm so proud of him, and um, Mike. Uh, Pisanio was saying, like, he still needs funds to go to school and to participate, and um, all these kids need funds. And um, if you go to Saving the Reality Orphanage and, and look at those pictures and look at, you know, you can just, I don't know, I'm just so grateful that Pisanio is doing what he is doing and participating and helping these kids to have a brighter future. 
even though he doesn't feel like his future is as bright as it should be because he didn't get the schooling that he needed. He's trying to help these kids to get to the next level and, and it's super important. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Um, hopefully it can come back on again soon. This is trying. Um, certainly we could, we could, if he doesn't come on again tonight, we can definitely do this again. Um, sometime and do more of these um, talks about fundraisers for him and um, also updates about good that we have been able to accomplish. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah, I'm hoping this reaches like far and wide and we get people donating, whether it's the smallest amount or not. Every little penny counts. Whatever you can donate. You know, I know it can seem like a lot during these COVID times and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, definitely every, damn it, every little penny counts. Sorry. <laughs> we almost yeah. had him again. I'm like, come on, we can do this. I'm going to tell okay. him again. Find the best reception. Um, yeah, hopefully he does get on again. Um. Trying to think of what else we can talk about for the orphanage and the fundraiser. Um, I guess I could talk more about collective consciousness and um, even touch my business, hypnotherapy business again. Um, I also feel like I didn't quite introduce myself properly in the beginning. Right? And I didn't um, even do your bio. I'm sorry. Drop the ball. Yeah. So I may as well share that now before we finish, at least, um, see if Casango comes on. But So my name is Troy J. Bacon. Bacon. I am a certified hypnotherapist. I live in Seattle right now. Uh, my wife and I will probably move out of Seattle in the near future. But anyway, we live in Seattle. We're probably going to stay in Washington for the foreseeable future. Um, but I work remotely. And I learn all of my hypnotherapy and even Reiki now um, remotely. And so well, some people, are, people surprised are surprised by that, even though remote education has been common for years, um, especially during the pandemic. Um, I learned, or I enrolled in the Hypnosis Motivation Institute in um mid 2021 after my walk-in experience which was november 11th 2020 um and then i went through a death and dying experience internally i felt like my heart was a void i had practically no feeling of who i was for a while um i had these after this walk-in event um which in retrospect, wasn't like it wasn't like a near death experience, but it was kind of dramatic. I had a three week long headache, felt like someone was um, squeezing a vice grip on my brain and pineal gland, and I think that was part of the adjustment um, from the walk in adjusting to the at that time what was much lower um, energy in my brain and head. Um. And so that happened. I had also neck pains, um, which is a common symptom of walking, a walking event. Um, also forgetting who I was, but also memories would bubble up from my subconscious. Um, this is another thing about the subconscious that's curious I could talk about. Um, but memories would bubble up. And it's not like... I don't feel like my walk-in was a complete exchange. I still have and maintain some basic aspects and the memories of um, the Troy that was here before. But the walk-in is, I think, basically a tag team particle from our oversoul. And that's what I've learned and connected with multiple times. Um, the walkout particle is actually in a gray body right now. And that's where we switched out with each other from. Um, 
where I came from. And so these memories would come up. Most of them weren't very dramatic or significant memories, but they were like just random memories that would bubble up at random times. And but they didn't feel like my memories. They felt like someone else's memories, even though I knew everything about them. So that's a symptom of walk-in um, event to all of it has to happen or a lot of this has to happen to um, it's not easy to diagnose spiritually. Um, so oh, I, went I went to a to friend, friend to get a quantum healing hypnosis session and in that I not only visited multiple past lives of mine but um, channeled my oversoul. And so that was different than any healing modality I've ever tried before in my probably 15 or more years of studying integrative medicines and energy medicines. Um, and so then I decided to, um, to learn hypnosis because there was something very potent and different about it. And so then I enrolled in HMI Hypnosis Motivation Institute. That's where my clinical education came from, clinical hypnotherapy. Let's see if Kasango can come on again. Yeah. He's trying. Um, and so then I learned um, there are things that came through organically, like flashes and memories that came through in dreams too after the walk in. Anyway, I learned this hypnotherapy. And I can do some of the clinical hypnotherapy still, but it's not like my my main forte. It's um, something I've learned. But when I started doing the clinical hypnotherapy and basic clinic uh, hypnotherapy things that I was taught, um, practicing with friends at in the beginning at the time, um, and I'm still working with a good friend on some things, but. Um, what happened quite naturally without even me trying or intending was angels would show up. Um, I think it was Archangel Michael, Metatron, maybe some others at first. Um, then some other archangels would come in here and there. Um, some alien beings too sometimes when I was going through major walk-in clearings and activations, um, especially in 2022. Um, actually, I don't, I prefer the term star people or star being more than alien or ET, um, or interstellar or intergalactic people. Anyway, so one of my motivations for hypnotherapy was for my deeper healing at first and then to um, teach it and share the service with others. Um, but I had a lot to heal. I had chronic pains after the walk-in and I've healed those and cleared those up largely from hypnotherapy and inner work and shadow work. But part of it, I also have to admit, is probably from increasing the alkalinity in my diet and eating more just whole raw vegetables and most of what I eat now is just vegetables and plant stuff. Um, occasionally I eat a little bit of fish and some meat, but usually not so much. Um, with Reiki healing, my empath abilities also um, awakened more, including my geomantic um, earth empath senses. And, um, I started to sense foods. Um, the energies of foods more um, in my evolution. Um, one thing I wanted to share about the subconscious that I've observed is that even though I had this walk-in experience, that it took me like six or seven months to even start feeling like I belong in this body first. Um, but the subconscious is like something individual to each of us. 
We each have our own subconscious um, intelligence and memories. And I think part of that comes from the Akashic um, and inter-lifetime um, memories from the soul. Some of it certainly does. Some of it is inherited from our ancestors and what our bodies have been taught and conditioned with growing up. Some of our subconscious is um, sometimes interconnected with the world of life, too. That is the part of it. But it's interesting how I came in as a walk-in, but my body's and subconscious slate wasn't just cleaned. I had to do all the work myself to clean it out. And there's always stuff to monitor. It's so easy to get conditioned and get obsessed and get um, get programmed and more. But yeah, it's interesting with the subconscious because it not only is our body or our body is our subconscious too. Um, that's where body syndromes come in, which I've learned a bit about. I want to specialize in that more and about body syndromes and hypnosis um, because... I've changed and healed things too here and there just through my subconscious and um, body, including um, post-COVID brain healing, which I've accomplished. Oh my gosh. Post-COVID stuff. It is insane. Um, We're going through so much stuff as far as breathing um, on Valentine's day of all days. Uh, My heart, I have to go and do a stress test and then I'm going to get a patch on that will monitor my heart for a week. And I'm like, well, that's kind of relative because it's Valentine's day and hearts and, and all the other shit. It's kind of all related, but um, it's insane. Like some people are born with extra valves. Some people have extra arteries. And I believe that COVID really upset whatever's going on within me. Yes. As a, a, you know, 20, whatever year old, I was a meth user for a while and, and that's not good. So I know I've abused myself in certain ways that I, I regret, but we all make mistakes. We learn from it. Um, so luckily I'm getting that done. But COVID, oh my gosh, like even people that haven't got it like that bad still have after effects. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. And I noticed that um, my first bout with COVID was um, January yeah, 2022, over a year ago. But I've had a, a couple of other viruses last year and even this last December through January. Um, they didn't they test didn't positive, positive for positive. COVID. One of them was weird because it was um, in like, in like maybe it was, maybe it was May cool. through July or almost to July um, 2022. It was like a weird long thing. My wife and I both got, um, hers was diagnosed as a bronchitis infection, but mine was diagnosed as a viral syndrome. And it was weird with me because it wasn't just all the COVID symptoms at once or multiples at once. It was like one after another. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Yay, you made it. I'm so grateful. Shit. All right. Well, carry on. (laughs) Okay. Um, What I was saying about that is I had this weird virus that was like, I'd have chills at one time or some days. And then some days I would then have occasional extra warmth, not quite a fever, but just feel extra warm. Um, Then some days I would feel extra fatigued. Um, Some days I would feel muscle pains. It was weird, but that was why I didn't get COVID tested at first, because it was just one weird thing after another. Um, It damaged my brain anyway. Um, Yes. It messed with my dreams. Dreams are interesting that I've observed that viruses mess with. Are yours super chaotic too? Like, I don't know. Mine are very they confusing are, uh, as far as like 
why the hell is this person in my dream? Or super chaotic, like end of the world sort of scenarios. Um, it's interesting. What I what happened with me with at least a couple different viruses. I've never had this before the walk-in or before COVID, but these viruses messed with my brain and the way I dream. And when I had them, um, what I remembered of my dreams was just like nonsensical weird stuff, like just scenes of mannequins or what looked like modern art or just stuff happening but it it wasn't symbolic it wasn't like a story or a message like my dreams normally would be welcome hey kissing it's yeah nice god is grace to be back here we've just been struggling with the network to be here thank you lord for making this for us I'm so grateful you guys are here. It's so good to see your faces. Yeah, come this side. Some of them are still us, are still sleeping. These are some that they are able to wake up. That little guy over there, um, there, yeah, there he goes. Good job. Good job, sissy. Oh yeah. my gosh. I love you guys so much. I just wait for him. Some of them are this side, maybe you can make it the image. This side. Come this side. Hello. Sam. So, yeah. Troy was saying that you had more points that you wanted to hit on. Um, but please introduce us to these beautiful children. Yeah. I want to explain more about. Disadvantages of someone not being educated to give light so that people they can know more if they leave the student without at least fundraising for them what they can so that they can make them go back to school. There is what we call Eastern Region Poverty Cycle. Here in Eastern Region, now they explain to you is the poorest region in our in Uganda. It's the poorest region. So, MDF is going to call upon everyone to support us. Because to break, break this, it's really hard. We need your support in any form that you can. However, it is little, it make a difference. Poor health. If someone is not is uneducated, you don't mind whether what, what gains all the poor health him or her. Lack of confidence. Lack of confidence. He or, he or him, she or him, don't be able to speak or to give out a, a clear speak to someone to understand. So, That's also a point for someone who is not uneducated, someone who is un- uneducated. So I call upon everyone to support Joel, Kasha, Juma, Blazia, with anything you can. Because anything you donate to our fundraiser that Brother Troy set up can make a difference. And make it get a book like this one, as we're seeing. This a book can make Joel to go back to school. Can make Juma to go back to school with this one. So come up with anything you can. Yes, lack of communication. Someone who's not educated cannot communicate well to people. So I don't think if it's like example like, example like me, I'm not I'm communicating with you if I'm not educated. If I'm going to go to school or learn something like English so I can communicate to you. That's also a point. Unemployment. As I was saying, I told you that for me, I wanted to be a journalist in the future. That was my dream to be a journalist. But I never shaped my dreams. I never shaped my dreams with lack of funds. 
I wanted to be a journalist. So I don't want to see Kasha has dreams. Well, like my dream, I want to Kasha to be a pilot in future. That's what all I dream for. I don't want to Kasha to be unemployed in future. Like me. That's what I, I fight. That's what Antessa, Brother Troy fight to give them a better more so that they can fight for themselves. Nothing can offer to this student like education. Education is the key to everything in this world. It's the key to everything in this world. Always they say that every pain gives a reason. Every pain gives a reason. And every reason changes a person. I know this is a this is really a pain that we have been passing through for last years, years that have been that that have passed the past years. We have been passing in terrible conditions, the sleeping conditions, food situations, education, health. I hope this is enough for us. This is enough for these children. I call upon everybody who's watching this video, please. Donate anything that you can to our fundraiser. Make these children go back to school. This is enough lesson for these children. They are still young to experience, pass through this tough experience, situation is terrible condition that we are in, that we pass through. Because we even, we even take two days not having food at the orphanage, missing meals. So, but this, so we call upon everyone to support us, please, with anything you can to make the students go back to school. The next point is exploitation. Exploitation is the action or act of treating someone unfairly in order to benefit from their work. The act of the act 